So again, skin on frame kayak. Um, yesterday, I put together the last frame onto the gunnels, and then I've gone ahead and cut the gunnels here to size um, to attach them to the stern uh, stem. So what I'm going to be doing today is shaping uh, the, the gunnels at the end here so that they can sit flush against the stem on both sides. And then I'm going to drill a couple of holes and lash them to this, uh, uh, to the stem. This string I have up here, I'm using so that I can look down the kayak and see if it's straight. Because if I pull on one or the other gunnel, I can actually see the bow move from side to side. And just a little bit of pull on either side moves the bow completely from side to side. So I don't really want a boat that's going to go around the surface. I want it to be as straight as possible. So, first thing I'm going to do, get rid of the string for now. I'll bring that up later. Uh, the gunnels are sitting in a good spot. What I'm going to do is mark a line straight down so that I know where I should be cutting. I'm going to be using this Japanese saw uh, to cut straight down and hopefully a flat cut so that when this pulls in, I can get a nice straight uh, angle on it. I'm just going to get a pencil. <clears throat> and as like always, uh, if you're watching and want to ask any questions, please you can uh, do so in the chat room. Uh, you can just type something and I can see it in real time. All right. Let's see. I think that should be enough. It's going to be a big piece that I'm cutting out, but. I think I'm going to start right around there and just make my way down. Straight. So it's really hard to get the right angle so that I can show it. So I'm just going to work here. It's also kind of awkward to try to make this work. But at least the gunnel is in a really good angle attached to the frame behind so that I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have to um, play with it too much to sit in the right place. Let's see if I can get this cut as straight as possible. So I'm just trying to make my way straight down here. Taking a nice chunk at an angle that I'm going to sand later. This Japanese saw is excellent. It doesn't vibrate the, the gunnel too much, and I'm able to keep a nice straight cut. I think what's really nice is with this one, it cuts as you pull rather than as you push the way usual. Uh, saws do. I think that makes a big difference. For anyone that's wondering, once again, this is uh, Dave Gentry. Uh, boat design. It's called the Baffin Bay. That's the model. From Gentry Custom Boats. He was great answering all my questions. I bugged him a whole bunch through email. It's too bad there's no fast forward button for me because as I do this, live 
sometimes I think, man, I wish I could just cut to the next scene and have the work done for me, but yeah, you got to put in the hours. Especially when you have to redo some parts. Oh, man. Some of my lashings I had to redo a couple of times. And one single lashing would take me. At least now I'm a little faster, but when I was just on my very first one, it took me so long. There we go. So now, if I pull this in. So that's sitting better. You can't really see, but I cut this at an angle here so that I am going to be able to pull it tight. I think I'm going to have to go even further in. I'm going to cut a little bit more. I think I'm going to go over there. That's quite a bit that I'm going to take out, but it has to sit really flush. I just wanted to have really good contact. Once I lash this down, it's it's going to be missing quite a bit otherwise. All right, let's see. Gonna be a nice big chunk, but that should be uh, parallel to the stem in the back. I'm just gonna check. Let's see. No. All right. There we go. Let's see if I can keep this straight all the way down. said as always if you have any questions please feel free to write into the chat so I'll see them in real time and I can answer and chat back and forth. Here in the US we have a uh, President's Day and I'm lucky enough that today we had the day off so I'm getting to work on this for a little bit. Try to make some progress. I'll also show in a bit uh, the progress I made on the molding for the on the mold for the combing. This saw is really great. Much better. Okay, I think this gunnel is going to sit just fine. I'm going to sand it a bit. Let's see how I can get this in there. Because with the other one, it was a lot easier. Because it wasn't attached. Am I? in the frame there. Okay. I hope I'm not in the way and you can see what I'm doing. Just trying to get a level surface here. Good. I 
think that'll work. I'm going to take away a little bit more on the bottom. So that when it's lashed together, it's going to sit flush against the stem. And I think I'm going to, there's a little bit of a belly right there. I'm going to take that away a little more. sits pretty well. The only thing I don't like is I wish it was a little bit further up. I'm going to take away a little bit more down here. One of the nice things about working with wood. There we go. That's looking better. All right, so now I need, I need to try to replicate the same thing on the other side exactly. That's going to be really tough. Yeah, I'm impressed. That actually is really nice. Okay, Japanese saw. And let's see if I can replicate the same angle. So for this one, I'm just going to be reworking behind the stem. There's nothing I can do about that. But all right, so I'm around here. So I left about a quarter of an inch up here, and then I went at an angle to try to be as parallel as I could to the stem. Okay, let's try that. See if I go. used in order to cut all of their stuff perfectly to size because I've been using power tools here and there the entire time but knowing that you're delegating your well-being to hunt in a boat and not being able to use fancy tools to do so that must have been really tough. I like the idea of a project that's going to take this long, several weeks. 
hopefully I get to finish it with a nice piece at the end. We'll see how it actually comes out and how it tattles once I'm done. So one thing I've been thinking about is the uh, deck rigging. So the, the shock cords that are going to go on top. So I'm thinking of painting the both black. And I'm wondering if I should go with black shock cords or if I should use a fun color as my accent on it. Because since I'm doing everything traditional and I'm trying to lash everything, I think it'd be nice for me to use a traditional color on it. But at the same time, it might be really fun to have a color for the shock cords. Okay, so the angle is good, but now my vertical angle is a little off. So I'll just need to cut a bit more. So the angle at which I cut this this way worked, but the angle that I have because of the way the, uh, the gunnel sits on it, it's a little off, so I'm going to try to take away a bit of that. Let's see if I can hold it steady. And just take another chunk out without hurting this piece too much. I also really don't want to hurt the stem either. Like always, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat. I'd be more than happy to discuss anything I'm doing. And trust me, all of this for me is a learning process. I've never done this before, so I know I'm going to be doing a lot of this stuff wrong. But it's been an absolute blast to work on it. Okay, so that's not bad. I don't like the angle at which it's hitting. There we go. I'm going to take another piece out over here. I think maybe for this one I should have put the camera from the top down, but it's just really hard to get the right angle as I'm doing this, especially then when I lash. I think it'll be more interesting to see from that perspective that it's currently in. Okay, let's see. That's pretty good. There we go. I think that's going to be good. It'll sit right there. All right, so I'm going to sand just like I did the other side. So what I'm going to do now is get my string again, see if I can get this going straight down the middle. That might 
exactly what that's saying. It looks pretty even. What I'm going to do, sorry, the main camera is going to have to deal for a minute. Yes, I'm moving this around. There we go. So I'm going to mark down the center line where this should sit. So there, I'm going to make these lines, so this is going to be my keel, and I need to keep the string in between these two black lines. And actually, right now, it's right in the middle. Really not bad. I'm surprised. I thought it would be moving around a little bit more, but it seems to be sitting in the right place. This has a little bit of twist, can't really see it in this direction. So I'll have to play with that a little left. That string seems to be right down the middle. It's looking good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is clamp these guys down. I think they should be. I think they should come right around there. So that seems to be right down the middle. Seems to be nice and straight. Three quarters on one side. Let's measure. Three quarters, three quarters. Wow, that seems to be right on all around. Everything seems to be nice and straight. Make sure this is straight here. It should be there. I think I'm going to be able to get that once I get these chimes. These are going to have to be cut right around here and attached to the stem. Whoops. I thought I saw the bow 
slightly pointing to the right, so I thought I'd try to fix that and then lost it. Lost everything. Let's see if I can do it again. Okay, the bow is pointing nice and straight. The stern seems to be pointing. No, the bow is not pointing straight. No, it is. It seems like too much. Check on the string and see if it's straight. No, I think now it's pointing a little bit to the left. There we go. That seems to be straight there. Let me check again. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Sorry to be out of frame for so long, I just needed to go down and look at the line. And it's looking good. Let's see if that's it. These are different heights. I'm just trying to measure everything and see if this is as straight as possible. It's too bad there's no control Z in real life because sometimes you have it in a spot, you think it's perfect, then you go and touch it. You wish you could just go right back to where you had it. That is looking good there. Let's see that's straight. And hopefully this boat will not go in circles. Okay, so now that it's in the right place, I'm going to make this a little tighter. And put some clamps on the bottom. Not a clamp right here. Maybe it's here. There we go. With so much stuff around, I keep losing stuff. All right. The way I'm going to do this. 
is I'm going to drill some holes. Now I'm going to have, ah, uh, last thing I didn't check, I'm going to move the camera to show that, is the angle of the stern here. I just want to make sure that, see it's dropping just a little. Should be right there. Okay, I'm going to have to move this just a little bit. Bring that stern up. There we go. Let's see now. There we go. Much better. Okay, so I'll have to <laughs> readjust again. But at least I think I know. Oh, we're in the right place. My left gun will have to come back just a tiny bit. There we go. All right, it seems to be straight all the way down. All right, I think that's it. I think that's the positioning. Then also put in the stern. I'm gonna tighten these again. And ready for drilling. It's a really tough step. All right, here we go.
I have three nice holes. What I need to be careful of here is uh, I'm going to have to put risers to finish off this uh, level that goes from the gunnel up to the end of the stern. So I can't really have sinew sitting right there. But what I can do is I'm going to make a hole right under here. some below as well. Okay, so I have a couple of nice holes. I'm just going to get some sandpaper, get those spots clean, and then do one line of lashing. Let's see, where did I leave the sinew? Over here. I know I have oh, I don't remember where I left my sewing needle. I had it over there so that I don't see it now. It's okay. It's one of the problems with being live. It's, I feel bad taking my time to go get things, but I need to do so in order to get what I want at the end. Okay. I just need to do some lashing now to make sure I get exactly this positioning. I don't want it to move overnight or I don't want to bump into it by mistake. I have too many tools everywhere. I don't know where that needle went. No, I have it over here somewhere. Sorry, guys. Where does that needle go? Did I put it over here? So as I mentioned before, if you have any questions other than, where's the needle, uh, please type them into the chat box and we can discuss anything that's going on, especially me looking for this needle. I'm thinking maybe I'll just move forward without it and see if I can get the sinew going through just by hand. So I don't see. All right. I'm going to see if I can just get the sinew going without the needle. No, you know what? I'm not going to be able to. The holes are too long and it's not going to hold out. So I'm going to see if I have one of my other needles to make it all the way through. Okay, we'll see if I can use this one. I think it might be a little small and hard to get this in through it, but I'll give it a try. So I'm going to take, as always, wingspan of sinew, about six feet. 
Okay, at least I was able to find the scissors. Alright, let's see if I can get the scissors through the needle. Yep, okay, so that worked. Okay, I'll work over here. Let's see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, so the needle is threaded. What I'm going to do is a stop or not at the end. So I'm going to do a figure eight. So up and over around, over from behind, and through the hole. And there's our stop or not, figure eight. And now I'm going to start the lashing. I'll take this spot over here. Let me come back over here. And what I'm going to do is in order to start, I'm going to make a regular knot. It's looking straight. I like it. Regular knot around the other one so that I can get the stopper knot working for me. Once again, for lashing, uh, Katsu has a really, really great video tutorial, katsucrafts.com, uh, and I've been asking him a ton of questions, well, not a ton, but I, I asked him a couple of questions on Reddit, we usually chat there about this type of stuff. Um, he knows what he's doing, so check that stuff out if you want to learn more about it. All right. So far, so good. I think this is going to be really good here. Okay, I'm going to go below. And I'm going to go above. So now that I go back through, I'm going to tighten the sinew once so that I have, so that it tightens in place. And for that, I use a very small dowel. There it is. And what's really nice about the sinew is, once you tighten it in place, it's uh, waxed. Slipped a little. Once you tighten it in place, it doesn't come undone. There we go. It's waxed and it stays, so you're able to pull on it for a while. And it will stay in place. All right, let's continue. Let's go below again. This time I'm going to go up. There we go. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to do this without the needle. Let's go above again. Let's go below from here as well. And I think 
After that, I'm going to tighten this one and cut it off and start with a new one. I think that's a good spot. There we go. Okay, so as of right now, I'm going to pull on it with the dowel again. There we go. Okay. Seems to hold in place. Okay, let's try not to lose this needle again. I mean, this needle as opposed to the other one. I know it's here somewhere. Alright, so what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to go around and grab these two over here. So it's nice and open. There we go. And I'll do a regular which is not onto itself and pull it back in. I don't know if you can see, but these three are now coming together quite a bit. And that's also tightening everything a bit more. So I'm going to do that several times. I'm thinking maybe around six. Maybe one more. It's really crazy how time consuming this really is. It's now been 48 minutes since I started this session. And although this is a really, really important step and I, I'm glad I took my time to do it, it seems like every step is taking, at least when I go when I do it live, is taking at least around an hour. Uh, there's been a couple of steps that I haven't uh, streamed and those took even longer when I lashed every single frame to the gunnels that took several hours over the course of two days there we go so I finished with a stopper knot another figure eight this is the other knot we had before uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of hitch Hitcher knots here too. I think it's your stopper knot in the way. There we go. And after that, I'm going to do a figure eight. Come around from behind and pull it. And bring it all the way down so that it stays in place there we go and now I'm going to cut these two there we go all right so I'm going to do a second one this time I know where the needle is so another wingspan, so around six feet. This is still straight. It's looking pretty good. And the same thing. I'm going to start 
with a figure eight stopper knot. So I'll loop around, come back, loop through, and there's our figure eight. There's our stopper knot. The other end, into the needle again. Okay, there we go. Same thing. I'll start over here this time. And I'll do a regular knot around the stopper knot. Sounds like those are the plows coming by. It snowed quite a bit today. There we go. So we have our stopper knot, regular knot. I'm going to pull that tight and right, go right in here. There we go. So now I'm going to try to go over all of these second time so every one of these holes gets a couple of a couple of times through because even though I tried to hit every single one, I need to double and triple them up in order to make it as strong as possible. I might have to get a set of pliers to pull it through. Just now that I'm starting to go through all of them, this needle is not as long as the other one. Let's go right through the middle one. So I'm going to do one more and I'm going to pull it tight. Just like before with the dowel. There we go. This is still looking nice and straight. Good. I just keep checking, looking down the bow and seeing if I'm still straight. Right, let's go here again. So I'm very excited about this build. I wonder how long it'll take me to finish everything. We'll see. But I would love to be able to launch this boat this spring. Get out on the water with it. Try some rolling. It'd be amazing if I were able to finish it before our pool sessions were over because really I could try a lot of rolls in the warm pool water but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it in time. I still have so much to go. But at least this, this was one of the stages that I was really worried about because now officially I have the gunnels attached both at the front and the back. At the bow and the stern. Alright, I'm going to pull on this again now. And it's officially looking like the kayak. It's straight. It's 17.5, 17 feet 5 inches. 
<laughs> That's Owen yelling. Oh, there you go. really excited about um, lashing the boat rather than using uh, epoxy. I mentioned before because I think if I make any mistakes I like that I can just cut it and do it over rather than just once the epoxy is dry well that's it you're done. Alright I think I'm going to do one more I'm through and I'm gonna tie it off. There we go. I'll go through this one. Okay. So now from here, I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna make it go through these top ones here, grab and pull down. That way, I try to. Uh, make everything a little bit tighter. There we go. That gave it all a little bit more of a pull and continues making everything tighter. So I'm going to do that a couple more times. I think the baby's eating right now. So that's really funny. Oh, I wonder if we've lost the connection. It seems like it's not moving. I'm looking at YouTube and it doesn't seem to be moving at all. I wonder if the connection was lost. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do a figure eight to stop this in case it's still going. Okay, there we go. We've caught up. And there we go. Stop or not there. I'm going to tie this off over here as well. Do you want to stop or not? And that'll do it for today's session. There we go. So I'll just do a stopper knot right over here. And then I'll cut these guys off. There we go. And there we go. And that's it. This stern is now officially lashed to the kayak. 
I'm going to look down again to see if it's straight. But it's pretty good. I will be fixing anything that's not completely straight. So thank you for joining me for this new part, part six. Uh, we've now attached the gunnels to the stern. And I will probably do another lashing. And then after that, we'll be attaching all the chines. So thank you for joining me. Let's see, am I on there? There we go. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.